sorry, I'm just sexting with Joan. I'm looking forward to being in bed with her shortly. And uh, let's just say I hope she's not brittle. Thanks to Audible for supporting In Bed with Joan. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Audible keeps you entertained during just about any activity, like walking, doing cardio, sitting in traffic, standing in line, or cleaning your house. Audible is offering In Bed with Joan viewers a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out the service. One audiobook to consider is I Hate Everyone Starting With Me, which is written and read, of course, by Joan Rivers. To download this audiobook or another one of your choice for free, go to audible.com slash joan. That's audible.com slash joan. And now on to the show. Hi, I'm Joan Rivers, the name of the show, In Bed With Joan. Let's see who's coming out of the closet today. Hey! Ah, all right, Russell Peters, how good to have you. All right. Good, good, Hello. good. Ooh, look how nice. I Thank love the you. jacket. Thank you. Did that for you. I'm going to start out the wrong way, so please don't. Sure. But I read in Forbes that you make so much money. <laughs> you made last year more than the entire country of India made. <laughs> and uh, how many call centers do you own? <laughs> I'm the head call center guy. I actually fake my own accent when they when you call. <laughs> I hope none of your cameras break down. <laughs> It'll just be ringing because I'm here. Did it help you or hurt you? To let them know how successful you are now. Uh, well, that's my third time on that list, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I, it's, it hasn't. It's never really helped me. It makes me feel good. Yeah. Does it make the <clears throat> audience resent you? Don't know, resent you in a way. No, I, I, wait a second. I'm sitting here, and and you're on Forbes's list. No, I think they kind of take me as their own personal victory, because because uh, I'm still not mainstream. You I, know, you're not, and yet you're you're so successful. Yeah, so it's one of those things where. You know, my fans kind of take pride in that, where they're like, look at us. Right. Look what we're doing now. You, now, who are your fans then, if you're not mainstream? Um, everybody who, I guess everybody who relates to me. Right. You know. And is that like, quote unquote, ethnic minorities? <clears throat> Hello, Jews! <laughs> it, it could be. Yeah. But, but it's more than that nowadays. That's yeah. the good news. Is it Canadians? Canadians. Do they are, consider themselves a minority? Well, on, only in Canada we yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> do you consider yourself a Canadian? Absolutely. So what happens when you go to India? Do you feel, like I went to India, and I enjoyed it, but I stayed at a very good hotel. So do I. I, I you don't get the, you get half the Indian experience. Right. Uh, you only get the Indian experience when you're in a car going somewhere, yeah. and your life is on the line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, daytime experience. Yeah. Daytime, the, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing how I said Nighttime, I think I'll go back to the hotel now. Yeah, That's a... it, it's scary that there's a cow in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> childhood, childhood, childhood. Mm -hmm. um, you were bullied by your father? Not by oh, my father. Who, who, who bullied? Um, by everybody outside of the house. Uh, oh, all right, so by <clears throat> good family, happy family. Happy, good... happy family, great family, working class. Yeah, okay. Mom worked in Kmart in the cafeteria. Did she really? Yeah. And a good day for us was if there was hot dogs or Salisbury steak left over and she'd bring it home. Right. I was like, score. Oh, you right. Know? And when did you say to her, Mom, you never have to go back to Kmart again? Turn in your card. Uh, or have you let her work? No, she she still wants to do things, but I'm yeah. like, you don't have to do anything. You know? Right, right. But they, you know, when you, when you grow up uh, working class your whole life, you know that way better than you know this. You right. Know? Right. So it's hard. Even for me, sometimes I, I'll do things and I'll be like, oh man, I don't think that's the right idea. But I'm, then you go, oh stupid, you worked hard and you got a lot of money. Now. Looks, yeah. Oh, what was well, I, I, the day I hit on Carson? I went out and I bought my sister and my mother and me. I bought us each a mink coat. Wow. So I, I, I get. What was your biggest purchase? <clears throat> um, I'd say a few houses. You yeah. Know? I, I have I have three houses. And, uh, next to each other? Or? No, not next that, to that each other. That would be like stupid. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> then I'd be an Arab guy. Yeah. And I'd, I'd keep my ha my wives in the other houses. <laughs> but three. So where are the three houses? Uh, Vegas, L.A., and Toronto. Okay. And which do you when you say I'm going home now? Um, it could mean any one of them, but it, all right. when it says I'm going home, home, I mean Toronto. Toronto. That's all right. Canada. Can 
every third comedian I'm meeting these days <laughs> is Canadian. Suddenly, every new comic, Canadian, Canadian, Canadian. They're very famous for comics, but they are no great Canadian doctors. You know what I mean? Uh, there were. That guy that discovered penicillin, what was his name? Uh, uh, I don't know. Fleming, I think. Uh, probably name. Jackie. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. a comic. <laughs> I mean, uh, apparently you can make jokes, but you can't cure that many diseases. Yeah, we don't really have many. We have free health care. <laughs> we don't have to worry about it. So when you're sick, do you still use that? No, I'm not a, a tax resident anymore. Oh. So when you when you become a non-tax resident, you lose your free health care privilege. But because you pay so much in taxes, they said you could have like five doctors live in your house in America yeah. for that much money. <laughs> Celine Dion. Yeah. Why? Um, Why? And first of all, what is that? I mean, get yourself a pacemaker. <laughs> she's she's used to doing that to her husband. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's considerably older than her. And, and I'm sure his ticker's not what it used to be. <laughs> and the other one, Anne Murray. I when love did it. you know? I love Anne Murray too. But uh, were you surprised when she finally admitted she was gay? No, I always thought she was. <laughs> She's had the man cut forever. <laughs> she she was the poster boy for for, for girls. <laughs> you've worked all over the world. Yes. When they say things like you've worked in uh, Bahrain, did you actually like go out and say where you're from to these people or did you uh, work always. on an army base? No, no, I, I do the actual countries. I don't do the bases. So... Who are these people? These are the new school Arabs that are on watching YouTube and 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 are hip to what's going on in the rest of the world now, and um, they just they just you know. And if you go to the Middle East, which I'm sure you've been. Oh yeah, as a Jew, I always run <laughs> every vacation. I'm oh, sh I'm sure you're heading to Saudi right after this. Oh, hey. They know me so well in Saudi. <laughs> they just go, hi Jay. <laughs> Yeah, they, go ahead. They're, they're, um, if you go there, the, the Indians are, oh, I'm Indian, and there's, Indians are everywhere in the Middle East because we're the help. Okay. It's much like your house, how you have Filipinos and Mexicans. Well, it's, uh, don't, don't, please don't say that in the camera because they're all illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that was said. Speaking of which. Jose, go back! <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. But so you don't change anything? I don't change anything. I won't even I won't even not swear. I will I will do sex, I will do swearing, I will do whatever it is I feel I need to do. And the minute they try and tell me not to, I'm like, I don't want to perform here anymore. What about are there women in the audience? Yeah. And the ones that you can see are beautiful. Oh, that I'm <laughs> sure. But a lot of a lot of A lot of ninjas. A lot of eyes twinkling. Yeah. I, I it's funny out there because I think I picked up the same chick three times. <laughs> She kept changing her contacts. <laughs> Could you do that joke there? Uh, carefully. <laughs> yeah. Carefully. Ca that's... You have to smile a lot when you do it and let them know you're kidding. When you started out, what were some of the early jokes you did? How have you evolved? Oh, my jokes were terrible. Oh, there such was, as? Uh, <clears throat> there was one I think I did. I wrote this one joke once, and I just laughed hilarious, hysterically when I was right. I wrote it. I was on my way to a gig, and you know, you're driving through those farm towns, and there was a big open field, and it said "lots for sale," and I remember going, "Lots of what?" And then I thought it was the funniest thing ever, and I said it that night, and they just stared at me, and I was like, "Oh, maybe it's because I'm out here." And then I tried it like three more times. I'm like, "No, apparently the joke just sucks." Yeah. <laughs> How many times do you? I call it kill your babies. Yes. How many times will you say, "I got to get rid of this joke, even though I love it"? Uh, you, that happens uh, probably maybe five jokes out of every set you write. Yeah. You know, and then you're like, "Damn it!" I'll try to. You, you start thinking maybe it's the delivery, uh, the zone I'm in right now, so I'll try it again later in a few years. And then you realize, no, it's just really joke fucking stunk. When do your <clears throat> jokes come to you on stage or? Are you? Do you write them down? Or are you a verbal? I'm a verbal guy. I, I, I keep it all in here. I can't. I think if I wrote it down, I would find it boring, and then I know that it would become monotonous every night. And I like to do a lot of talking to the audience and and going off the top. I mean, like there's people like you and Rickles and Newhart and 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 all the people that I admired at growing at growing up in the game. Uh, and I would watch the way you guys did it, and I was like, I want to do it like that. I want it to look like I, I want it to. Not only do I want it to look like I'm thinking of it on the spot, I actually want to be thinking of it on the spot. Yeah, yeah. 
who gave you your first big break? Or who oh. said to you, you're right, they're wrong? Uh, I think... I think my first special in Canada was in 1995, and I had only been doing stand-up six years. And uh, all of a sudden, we started getting fan mail when it aired. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I never, I never expected this. And, uh, and I think it was just the, the people spoke at that point. But was there one specific person? Did somebody come backstage and say, you know, son? Actually, funny you should say, Jerry... Um, uh, Lewis, Jerry Stiller. Don't tell me Jerry, Jer Lewis. Jerry Stiller. Oh, what a difference! <laughs> oh, thank God, because it was Jerry Lewis. <laughs> he would. He would... <laughs> I, I would quit now. <laughs> Jerry Stiller saw you. Jerry Stiller saw me. This was in Montreal, just for laughs, and uh, he came backstage after my set and said, "I want to meet Mr. Peters," and and I was all geeked out and. And then uh, I never saw him again after that, but I had a picture, and, and I was very excited about that. And then I saw Ben Stiller uh, in the Valley one night having dinner with his wife. <laughs> and I just walked up Luckiest to him. Luckiest <laughs> white man alive today. <laughs> Let's go back to his father. Let's go back. You know, they say funny skips a generation. So let's move on away from Ben Stiller. <laughs> now, you mentioned... Dating. Mm -hmm. Are you? Are we single? I'm very single. Uh, I don't even have a girl that's going to get upset when they see this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like there's the girl yes. that you're kind of boning on the side and you're yeah. like, oh, you know, I don't even have that. Yeah. How could you say that? How could <clears throat> you yeah. say Why? Um, or is it, are you in between? No, I, I, I got divorced and... Uh, bad a divorce? A good no, divorce. it wasn't a bad divorce. It just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then I started seeing a lot of chicks, and and then uh, a lot of chicks started asking for money. They weren't even clever about it. It's not like they were like, oh, man, rent is due. I'm so screwed. Yeah. It, they yeah. were just like, hey, can I get five grand? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Oh, can I get? Oh, I had one girl ask me for 100 grand. Are you serious? 100 grand. I'm like, bitch, what do you need 100 grand for? I'm not giving you a house. Right. You're not getting the down payment from me. No. We're not even an item. We're fucking. Yeah. <laughs> And we're doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you think you'll find true love? Would you have to arrange a marriage? I'm nah. not being cute now. No, not at all. Yeah. Because are your parents Indian they're, Indian thinkers? They're not that Indian, no. no. We're, we're kind of a mishmash. We're, we're products of the British being there for 400 years. So. Yeah. You wrote your book, which is still on the bestseller list. I don't know if it still is, but yes, it's. Well, it that's was. what they told me, well, just to upset let's, me. Let's go with that. Yeah. I meant to bring you one, by the way. Oh, sure. I did, Paulie. Yeah. What did I say? I was like, yeah. I was like, shit! I forgot the book and yeah. a DVD for Joan. Don't worry. You now, know what? Wait, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to say it's okay. I'll buy it. <laughs> no. They always do that. It was good, but they say, no, no, Russell, don't be stupid. I'll buy it. We. I'll tell you a funny story. We were on a flight to Toronto last year. You were sitting directly in front of me. And as we took off, the plane got hit by lightning, you, oh, and we dropped. Do you remember that? I was sitting right behind you, and I leaned in, and I said, I'm so glad we didn't crash, because nobody would give a shit that I was on this flight. <laughs> nobody believes that. The plane took, and the whole plane lit up. It went up. boom, and we dropped. Yes, it was, <clears throat> and it got very silent. Yes. Everyone just was, and how about they didn't tell us what happened for over an hour? Yeah. That's what I was very like, scared of. It sometimes happens upon liftoff, and I'm like, really? <laughs> an hour later? It was so scary. You are so adorable. I don't understand why we don't have a woman in your life. Um, I'm kind of a degenerate. I'm a, you know, I like women a lot. And so you'd I, rather have many than? Are you friendly with your your ex? Uh, we're cool. Okay. It's hit and miss, though. You know how that is. Yeah. yeah. You know, some days it's great. Some and days mine it's all died, so I've been well, very you, lucky. You, you dodged the bullet. Luck. <laughs> you don't have to divide yeah. anything. Nothing. You wear a black dress, <laughs> and you usually lose a little weight, so it's like yeah. a win-win. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I should be so lucky. <laughs> you were bullied in school. I sure was. Why? Uh, it was the '70s and '80s. I was Indian. I yeah. still am. Yeah, I was um, going to say surprise. <clears throat> I've, I'm going th undergoing that so, surgery to become not Indian anymore. But why? You keep going back. To, I don't understand. Toronto. It was very. It Toronto was a different time. Toronto Indians doesn't make sense. It was a different time back then. We're all new immigrants, and uh, people were afraid. I guess you know. Now it's it's very different. Um, but growing up then, and I was a really small kid. I was a small kid with a big mouth. 
Which is very smart. Yeah, so people would say things to me, and I would snap back with something quick, and then I would get the shit beat out of me. But then when I was 15, I started boxing, and I boxed for nine years, and then I never, ever got beat up again. We asked some of our guests, when you went through a bad childhood, is there anyone out there that you would like to say, tell us what they did to you, and then you could show them how lucky you are, how far you've come to be sitting in this bedroom for free with Joan Rivers. Right into that camera. I wish I could be so specific as to say who picked on me, but there was a lot of it. Up until, get... up until the age of 15. Name of the school? Uh, Chincuzzi High School. Chincuzzi picked on you? Chincuzzi. Yeah, that, that, ninth grade and 10th grade, I was in Chincuzzi. Uh, secondary school in Brampton, Ontario, and I was picked on daily uh, and to the point where I left that high school for 11th and 12th and went to another high school, which they had considered the slow school, and uh, <laughs> the slow school was amazing with me. Everybody was cool. Everybody was great, and, it, and if, so much so that I started a scholarship in that school because those kids in that school had less of a chance of going to college. But do you have to be slow? You do. They thought I was slow. Yeah. The, the 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 school counselor thought I was slow. So if they wanted, they even get... spoke to me slowly, and I'm like, "Why are you talking to me like this? <laughs> Is there anything you're interested in?" Yes, you speaking faster. <laughs> <clears throat> Is there anyone out there you would like to apologize to? <laughs> There's a lot of girls that I did wrong. See, is there one in particular? Um, no, there was a couple in particular, but I've already apologized to one and we're friends now. And Did you the give other us one... her name? Hmm? What was her name? Her name was Althea. Althea. What did you do to Althea? I was with her for six years and uh, in my 20s, and I was not a very good boyfriend. I was kind of a major asshole. And, uh, and I cheated on her a lot. And... Althea, you're hearing this? And she knows. We, we, we're cool now, you know. Did you send her a nice gift? She can use the check. <laughs> I know, right? I want you to look at that. I want you to promise her a car. Oh, great. Now i got to buy her a car. She's yeah. going to have photo proof. Six <laughs> years. Go on. Geek, Go on. as I know you, there will be payback in your favor. I don't want to say what because I don't want to get held down to it. But something good will come your way Prom shortly. And something nice, like a car or a watch. <laughs> It'll be cheaper to buy you a car. <laughs> we always have a portion of the program where we ask our guests uh, little quizzes, kind of. Mm -hmm. Are you willing? Yes. <laughs> Move over. <clears throat> Russell, okay. Don't fall off. This oh, don't easy. you worry. Okay. Uh, for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. Would you rather eat Indian food every single day or never have Indian food ever again? Well, I wouldn't want anything every single day. So if I had to do without, I'd have to do without. Never again. All right. Never again. One woman every night for the rest of your life or different women all the time, but never have a woman a second time. That sounds awesome. Oh, that's a good thing? <laughs> that's a great, that's my life already. You are a degenerate. <laughs> All right, uh, Bieber or Timberlake? I'll take um, Timberlake at the moment. Bieber is Canadian. I should yeah. have picked him, but he's pissing in, in, in kitchens. That's not impressing me right now. All right, this is a good one. This is, you're going to date her. Okay. Casey Anthony or the Octomom? Hmm. Well, one fucks and the other one's fucked, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will take uh, the crazy-ass Casey Anthony. Yeah, all right. You have a daughter, though. I know. Well, I'll keep her away from her. Yeah, <laughs> keep an eye on her. All right, keep excellent. Bell on. <laughs> this has been just great. I, Russell, thank you so much. For thank joining. you. Let's, everybody, Russell Peters, everybody. Thank you. Yay. Now, we always end this the same way. I have that wonderful clapper system. Mm -hmm. So if you would do me the honors. Give you the clap? Give me the clap. Thanks to Audible.com for supporting today's show. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash Joan. That's audible.com slash Joan. I was just in bed with Joan Rivers, and uh, uh, you want to talk experience. That lady had me twisted. 
she was awesome. I mean, you know, it's one of those things as a comic, you watch people your whole lives, and then uh, if you're lucky enough, you get to meet them, and if you're as lucky as I am, you get to be in bed with them and do an interview. So, life is good. Uh, I've only met Russell once, so I don't know him very well. Uh, well, I don't know many Indians very well, but I can tell you one thing, he's a lot funnier than Gandhi. And thank God he wasn't in a diaper. Thank you.